So the oxidizing pictures are a, um, a map, if you will, of our spiritual journey of discovering our true nature. The 10 stages as they've been expressed are as follows. One is the search for the bull. So the bull, the bull is the same as the ox and the bull represents our true nature, right? So the search for the bull. Number two, discovering the footprints. Number three, perceiving the bull or catching the bull. Five, taming the bull. Six, riding the bull home. Seven, transcending the bull. Nine, both bull and rider transcended. Nine, reaching the source and 10, returning to the world. Quite a journey. In the earliest expression of this path, um, there actually were eight of these stages and it ended with both bull and uh, rider transcended. And that uh, image for that is the Enso, just the circle. So boom, all together. And then shortly thereafter, and by shortly, I mean 200 years after <laughs> it was developed, um, these, the second two, or the uh, final two, were added to the original eight, which is reaching the source and then returning home. And the image for returning home is actually now we have the figure returning and frolicking the marketplace and having fun with the kids and you know buying tea and dancing and singing, and things like this. So in our path, we, we recognize this as being the real culmination of a spiritual journey is full, integrated, lively, wholehearted, spontaneous activity in the world. So we can kind of recognize the lineaments of this path. <clears throat> in fact, it goes right back to the historical <coughs> Buddha, Shakyamuni's path. He quested, he had a question come up and then he quested in search of a resolution to that question, he practiced, and then he experienced the foundation of reality. When he had this experience, he expressed his realization by saying, I and all beings everywhere and the great earth simultaneously have, si simultaneously have attained the way. I, all beings everywhere throughout space and time, so that includes us, and the great earth have simultaneously attained the way. <clears throat> so it's a journey to this experience of fundamental nature, which is present all the time and includes everybody and everything. So the first way we look at it is in, is in this kind of linear progressive dimension, right? Of questing, practicing, experiencing, realizing, expressing. Another way that I like to express this sequence is, is view, understanding, manifesting, integrating, and realizing. <clears throat> or you see it, you get it, you bring it alive at times in your life, intermittently through our life, through your life. Integration means you bring it alive as your life, every moment of your life, okay? And then realization is that it's fully real in everything you do. Okay. So that's kind of the path. 
It's a path of mastery, I could say. And it's a path that starts in sensing that there is a disconnect between the truth of your life and your experience of your life. That's how I like to put it. <clears throat> Most of us have this, this kind of moment where we, we experience a gap. There's something off. We're not entirely centered. Maybe we're not feeling authentic. Maybe we feel a pervasive sense of meaninglessness or unreality or dissatisfaction with our life. It's certainly the case that in this very materialistic culture, there's a huge social conditioning that doesn't provide any path of meaning or depth for the most part in our culture. We might get certain conditioned teachings from our family about where meaning resides, where purpose resides, where depth resides, where perhaps the sacred can be found in our lives. But it's pretty rare these days to have a strong tradition that gives us access to those things and allows us to grow towards and into those things. So I'm sure everybody here, you know, was brought here by this gap that you experienced from your sense of the truth of your life, but, but yet that not being manifest in your, in your everyday life. So then the path unfolds and motivated by this suffering or this gap, we try to resolve that question close the gap and that sets us off on this journey which is mapped in the oxford pictures <clears throat> this map is kind of a, a very general map and it's also an overlay on experience as all maps are right? it's an abstraction around experience so in no way should you take this to mean what we do is we, in a very linear way, we move through these stages and we master one <coughs> and we don't go back to the, we don't backslide at all. We just progress onward and then we reach some kind of full culmination. culmination. It isn't like that, it isn't that clean because life isn't that clean. We just, uh, at, from a high level, we can look at it as growing, growing in this way. And even the stages themselves aren't even so discreet. Um, I, I read where the, um, the tiering system associated with martial arts, which has, you know, white belts going to brown belts, going to black belts, that that arose just from the fact that everybody started with a white belt and the more you practiced, the dirtier it got and nobody ever washed it. <laughs> And by the time you've been practicing a lot, you were a black belt. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and now, of course, some cultures have, you know, in schools have sort of taken on, well, here you, you burned the yellow belt or the brown belt, and it becomes a badge of honor, right? Where you get that. And that gives an illusion of a, of a formality to the process which doesn't really, you know, it kind of misses something. It misses the nuance and it misses the depth of, of what's going on with internalization of the process. But nevertheless, it does also reflect a reality of deepening and growing that you can see in yourself and that somebody else who's, who's traveled the path can also see too. And this is where a teacher comes in is a helpful person to give you a reflection of kind of how you are um, revealing, you know, this truth. Can point out how dirty your belt is, <laughs> <laughs> and the dirtier the better, in a sense. But again, even that kind of 
you know, validation, you know, students can take that, you know, the wrong way and say, oh, I've passed 100 koans. And so that means I'm wiser or more awake than the person who's passed 20 or the person who isn't even doing koans. And this is really common. You know, get, get our, the ego sort of attaches to how far along you are how, in the stages, you know, how, how many steps you've traversed. <clears throat> So uh, a, a good teacher will always kind of recognize how dirty your belt is, but at the same time, let you know that you know, there's nothing in that other than how dirty your belt is. It doesn't make you any better, wiser, or anything more special than anybody else. So the map is, is it's an overlay on our experience. This just gives us a sense for where we're at with the progressive dimension of the circuit. The progressive dimension, again, is just one aspect of the overall journey, if you will, because journey is, is an inner journey. It's a journey into the depth of your experience, into the ground of being, right? So at every moment, that ground of being is available to you. So at any stage along your path to go in is to go to the, to the culmination. In this way, if you have a sense of trying to achieve something, you're going to be off. It's going to throw you off. <clears throat> There's a, a koan that I've shared recently, and some of you heard it at Zazenkai on Saturday, and I'm going to share it again here. Master Joshu once asked Master Nansen, who was his teacher, what is the way? Nansen answered, ordinary mind is the way. Then should we direct ourselves toward it or not? Joshu asked. Nansen answered, if you try to direct yourself toward it, you go away from it. So at no point can you think of this as goal-oriented or accomplishment-oriented. If you direct yourself toward it in that way, you're, you're going away from it. Always. It always has to be an inward journey into the ground of your reality as it manifests in your present moment right now. The koan goes on. So Joshi's like, all right, so I can direct myself to it. Ha. <laughs> I know the way unless I try for it. <coughs> Nansen said, the way is not a matter of knowing or not knowing. Knowing is delusion. Not knowing is confusion. When you've really reached the true way beyond doubt, you will find it as vast and boundless as outer space. How can it be talked about on the level of right and wrong? <clears throat> now, with these words, according to the, to the lore, uh, Joshu had sudden realization. So I actually really saw into the nature of this journey, the nature of the way. Um, my, my teacher, Shishin Roshi, shared uh, a saying from Maizumi Roshi, his teacher, and my first teacher. Maizumi was asked, what's the purpose of practicing Zen is? And Maizumi said, it's to become stupid. And that is right on with this koan, right? It's to really bring a fully alive not knowingness beyond right and wrong and all the judgments and commentaries that we have in our mind. And to get to a place where we're really meeting the world from that place. But we don't want to mistake the map for the terrain. So don't think that this is a map of, of and you know, you know the path. Don't think you know the path. 
You have to walk the path. Over the course of a life or over the course of a long-term practice, it kind of follows these aspects to it, you know, that we'll, that we'll be looking at. But you shouldn't fixate yourself in a particular stage, you know, as you understand it. In fact, even in the course of a single day, you can transmigrate between many of these stages. You know, even in, in a way, every stage is whole and complete as it is. You can even say that within every stage, the whole process unfolds. So there's a kind of a view and understanding, a manifestation, integration, and realization within every stage. We'll talk about that more. At every stage we question, you know, what's going on. We get some understanding about what's going on. We practice it. We realize it. We've, we've really internalized it and then we've moved on. And all that can happen, you know, just for example, the level of, um, say, noticing the footprints, you know, recognizing that something is happening. It's like, what are, what's that? Oh, it's a teaching about a gap. Huh. Oh, I kind of get that. I see that. Ah, I'm going to really feel into what that is. There's a gap. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we, and then we, and then we live from that place and then suddenly find ourselves, we've internalized that whole step and now suddenly we're on the, on the next step. <clears throat> So it's really quite an adventure because every step, every stage has its own accomplishments and its own pearls and its own insights. And it also has its own perils and obstacles. And then each one of these stages, we're going through a whole journey of, of things that we take in and insights we have and joys and pleasures and accomplishments and then but there's also areas that you can get stuck with each stage so it isn't this broad kind of thing where it just overall gets easier and more glowing and more blissful and more angelic <laughs> and then then at the end you transcend everything and yay it's not like that at all it's about getting dirtier and dirtier <laughs> Find you'll love that dirt more and more, and you'll become that dirt more and more. And you'll drop away this, this self centeredness that makes things so problematic. And so I less and less that, more and more dirt. 